my name's Wesley. And would you believe I'm still waiting for someone to send me a damn present? Well, it's that time of year winter. And if you're like me and live in the Lower Mainland, you know that this means the beginning of rain, followed by a week of big snow, then some rain, some more rain, rain after that, followed by spring, which is really just two weeks of rain. Which leads us to the two weeks in July where it's actually sunny. That's usually the time all the tourists show up and like to say things like, oh, it's so beautiful here. Wow, can't believe how the west coast of Canada is so much like California. You guys must love living here. Sunny all the time, always doing yoga on the beach. Oh, it's so awesome. And then you tell them, well, sometimes it actually rains here and that's not so pleasant. And you're always met with, well, at least you don't have any snow. I guess they're right. I could be living in Alberta. Winter is upon us and that means one thing for me. It's hot chocolate season, but it's also 2020 and making things needlessly overcomplicated seems to be on trend. When I was a kid, fancy hot chocolate usually meant my mom opening a packet and a cup of hot water and that was great. Sometimes it meant going to the local bakery and being allowed to push the button on the hot chocolate dispenser all by yourself. Every now and then you even got a marshmallow or like a spits of whipped cream. Spurts? Swish of whipped cream. As a young adult, fancy hot chocolate came from Starbucks and usually cost about $6.50. And now as a slightly older, very youthful, contributing member of society, Hot chocolate apparently is coming out of the bomb. Like for real, people are having hot chocolate explode in their faces every day, it's become a real issue. Since you can read, you already know I don't mean a literal bomb. Today, we will be making hot chocolate bombs. And that is the bomb, plus 10, so 20. Now, since this is a new trend, you can assume two things. The first one being that I've never done this before. The second one is that this trend, it's probably about three or four years old and there are several people who have done it already. I can already promise you that I'm gonna do a much better job and these are gonna be the most beautiful hot chocolate bombs you have ever seen. So having said all that, in the spirit of 2020, let's overcomplicate hot chocolate and make some bombs. <laughs> Guess that's more like fireworks. Here is a list of things you will need. Plastic wrap, mini marshmallows, hot chocolate mix with extremely fancy names, Christmas baubles, fancy glassware, chocolate chips, mine are dark, also spooky, a hot plate or stove, a double boiler, or some sort of equivalent apparatus. You'll also need a screenshot you accidentally took while adjusting your camera. All right, so after you've put on the proper PPE, you can start. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I've never done this before. So after doing two to three minutes of research on Pinterest, I formulated a plan. I'm gonna take these baubles, dip them in chocolate to create a half circle. From there, I'm gonna do it again so I have two. I will then fill one half of the circle with either expensive hot chocolate, I can't believe it's mint hot chocolate, or luxury coffee that's not instant. In some situations, I might fill them with all three or a combination of the two to create a very fancy mocha bomb. <sighs> Whoa, mocha bomb, radical, tubular dude, I love mocha. Sure, that's what all the kids are drinking mocha from a bomb. Mocha bomb! Melt the other one on a hot plate. Not this kind of hot plate, literally a plate that's hot. And then I will seal both sides together, creating a little circle bomb full of hot chocolate mix. After that, I will then cover any weird seams with marshmallows. This plan seems pretty solid and I think this is gonna be miraculously easy. So now that I've explained my plan, my first step is to grab my hot plate, make sure it's turned up to high, good. And once my water's boiling, which it is, I can pour in my chocolate. So you may have noticed that the bag of chocolate I poured into this bowl was empty, but somehow there's chocolate in it. No, I promise I'm not a witch. This is actually the second time I've done this. The first time the clip that holds my phone in place while I film came loose and it was mostly just footage of the ceiling. And while I'm sure you would all love to see footage of my ceiling, I decided to film it again. Okay, all right. So while my chocolate is melting, my next step is gonna be to cover these baubles in plastic wrap.
Now this is pretty easy. You're just gonna pull this over the bobble, make sure it's as smooth as possible. Ooh, can't even tell. It's like a toilet seat on April Fools. And then you wanna wrap this bottom part to be as little as possible. Oh, that's beautiful. And because this is really expensive plastic wrap, it's definitely gonna stay in place. And for now, I'm just gonna put this in here and then do it again, four times, or as many times as you desire to make these. I don't know, maybe you're making 12 of them. Whole bunch of people coming over. Although there shouldn't be a whole bunch of people coming over. That's not what you should be doing. Cute. Oh my gosh, with this. <laughs> I actually need that. All right, now that I have what some people would consider a beautiful Christmas display, those people have no taste. I can then continue to wait for my chocolate to melt. Wish these cups had a drink in them. Oh, it's ready, it just stinged. Looks good, smells nice. All right, so now that my chocolate is melted, it resembles a very thick soup. Delicious. So my next step is to just take the balls and dip them in. Now I'm spinning them around to make sure I get an even consistency. Perfect. And then you just set this down in here and let it harden. Let's do another. Gorgeous. So now that they're all done, I'm just gonna pop them into the freezer and wait for them to harden. This should probably take between half an hour to 45 minutes. So while my shells are in the freezer, I can prepare for my next step. I'm just gonna take this chocolate off of the pot and replace it with a plate. So I'm doing this in order for my chocolate to cool down a bit so I'll be able to use it to attach the marshmallows without them melting through the shell. I'm also getting this plate ready to melt the edges of the shells together. So while my plate heats up and my shells are in the freezer hardening, now is the best time to tell you that like Martha Stewart, not only do I look good in pastels, but I happen to have some already made right here. So our next step is just to melt the edges of these a little bit so that they're perfectly flat, which will make them easier to attach. Ah, it melts really fast. Okay, my shells, they look pretty okay. I mean, they're super fragile and no one told me that was gonna happen. Thanks, Pinterest, what a jerk. However, we're just gonna pour hot milk on them, so really, is there a point? This is a fun at home project. We're not professionals. Okay, well, I'm, I'm a professional at everything. So now that these are mostly flat, I pick the three that look the most solid. I can see that some of them have a couple weak points that I can see through them a bit. This one has a hole in the side. I mean, that's not gonna help me really. But so I pick the three that look the best and I'm just gonna fill them with different mix-ins. I can't believe it's not mint. Who names these things? So I'm just gonna put in a few spoonfuls and hope that that's enough to make it delicious. If it's not, whoever drinks this will just have to pretend it is. Come on, be nice. The next one's just regular hot chocolate. Oh, with tiny marshmallows, it is tiny marshmallows. That's nice. People love that. I know it's probably way too much. And this one's gonna be very special. Mocha! With tiny marshmallows, I guess. Not picking them out. And now I'm gonna put a scoop of this very fancy luxury coffee that's not instant. That's so fancy. So now, as you can see, each one of my half shells, mocha in a half shell, chocolate bomb, anyway. Now you can see that each one of my shells is full of beautiful hot chocolate mixes. First of all, I can't believe it's not mint. Hot chocolate, who named this? Who, who's in charge of this around here? Expensive, hot, ouch. Chocolate, and then there's money signs. Luxury coffee, not instant. Although it definitely has to be instant because it won't work if it's not instant. So my next step is to then put lids on each one of these containers. But first I have to melt them. I don't know, I don't know how this is gonna go, okay? It's working. This one's got a hole in it. This one also has a hole in it and kind of looks like a monster. Scary. Ooh. My plan is to take my chocolate that's now pretty cool and just kind of patch up any holes. Now, if this is too hot, my shells will just melt and that will suck. All right, so my chocolate is definitely too hot and has definitely left a big hole in the side of this. We're just gonna uh, plug that with a marshmallow. Problem solving. And now I can decorate them with my marshmallows, but I'm only gonna use the very cold chocolate of the very outer rim of this hot bowl. 
Ooh. So I'm just gonna place marshmallows around in what looks like a decorative pattern, but actually I'm covering up many little flaws and holes. Nice. Yeah, looking great. Is it fashion week in here? This one just keeps getting worse. All right. So now that I've finished decorating, it just occurred to me I have no idea what's in any one of these. If you're making these at home, which I know you're all totally making these at home, remember to decorate each one in a different way so that you'll know what's inside of each of them. Or you could leave them like mine and each one is gonna be a fun surprise. It's like coffee, right? I mean, I liked coffee when I was a kid and I turned out great. So I'm just gonna pop these into the freezer and let them fully solidify. In the meantime, I'm gonna start boiling some milk on my hot plate. Here is some footage so you can see how crazy these turned out. So my milk is ready and the moment of truth is upon us. But first, I'm gonna take a fork and just give this a little bit of a whisk, just to give it some froth. Tubular, again. Lots of things are shaped like tubes today. All right, here we go. Now I'm gonna use this one because it's leaking the most. Just plunk it in. Eee! That's the best hot chocolate I ever tasted. Now that that whole ordeal is done, I can tell you that was one of the funner projects I've done in my life, but definitely not what the internet told me it would be. Pinterest told me this was a fun activity for the whole family. Kids would love it. Parents would enjoy it. First of all, there's so much cleanup with melted chocolate. My kitchen looks like it's full of poop. Secondly, I found that project lots of fun, but I enjoy things like crossword puzzles, filling out paperwork, word searches, analytical thinking. Based on my extensive knowledge of children, not many that I know like to wait 45 minutes for a chocolate ball to harden before they're allowed to touch it. However, pouring the milk and melting the chocolate, it was cool to watch everything melt and become hot chocolate. But that's all for now. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. You all had a very exciting time and are gonna go back and watch two more of my videos. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Bye!